as distinguished guests. It's uh, really a great honor for me. And also, uh, I, I would really like to thank the organizers for uh, putting this uh, wonderful meeting together. I, th I think it's really timely and very, very opportune. Um, what I wanted to do was to give you a brief background to uh, the ICGB and what our mandate is, um, and then to tell you what we've been doing in relation to COVID-19. Um, so ICGB uh, is an international organization. Uh, we have 65 member countries, and as you can see from this first slide, uh, these are located throughout the world. We have three research institutes, uh, which are located in Trieste in Italy, which is also the headquarters. Uh, we have an institute in New Delhi and also in Cape Town. The ICDB mandate is to provide a centre of excellence for research and training in molecular biology and biotechnology, specifically addressing the needs of our member countries. And of course, we're very closely aligned to a number of the SDGs. Now, our, um, our instruments of action are, are several, uh, and I'd just like to brief, briefly say a little bit about these because they're also very relevant for the collaborative discussions that we've, been, uh, that we've been hearing about. So there's the science that we do in the laboratories, and this is in close collaboration with uh, the scientists in all of our member, study, uh, member countries. There's the advanced education that we provide through supporting long and short-term fellowships for PhD students and postdocs. These can be in ICDB labs, but they can also be part of a mobility program to promote collaboration and exchange between laboratories in our member states. Obviously, we're very supportive of uh, running meetings, courses and workshops, and particularly hands-on training workshops uh, in low resource settings. Uh, we're also a grant funding agency and we provide research grants for our member countries. Um, and we're very keen to promote uh, young scientists who have spent several years overseas and wish to return home and establish their own research activities. Uh, and we're keen to support those young scientists in getting established with their own laboratories. We're also in the business of direct technology transfer where we transfer uh, production capability of biotherapeutics, particularly of biosimilars, to our member states. And for instance, this can include uh, various forms of insulin, interferons, and human growth hormone. And we also offer a variety of scientific services uh, and advice. So we, we link our science research to provide a better quality of life in our member countries, and we also do this through scientific diplomacy. So how has ICGB been responding to the COVID-19 crisis? Uh, as we all know, um, this really came upon us in January, February, and at that time there were no scientists within ICGB working on coronaviruses. However, we had a number of quite far-sighted individuals who really positioned us uh, in, in a way that we were ready to respond uh, when the crisis hit us here uh, in Italy in March. And so what we have been doing uh, is assisting locally but also internationally with, our, with laboratories in our member states to provide assistance on disease surveillance, diagnostic support and sequencing of isolates and also uh, performing studies on uh, patient genomics. We're screening for novel antivirals. Uh, again, this is done locally as well as internationally, and we have some strong collaborations uh, in India where a number of these uh, products are now in clinical trials. We're obviously, like many people, we're interested in the new, in the uh, immune responses in recovering patients, and particularly with respect to the ability to neutralize the virus. Um, and we're working with health authorities on various different forms of testing platforms as well as pathological analyses. Um, we've also established a, a web resource page, which I'll say a few words about in, in, in a couple of slides time. Just to show you a little bit of science, uh, we've been uh, very interested in looking at lung pathology in, in, in patients. And as you can see from this slide, 
there are some really gross abnormalities taking place with large sin situ which form. And we believe that this is a direct response uh, to the viral uh, uh, coat proteins and its fusogenic uh, capability. As I mentioned, we're doing antiviral screening, both drug repurposing and novel compounds. And this is done in collaboration with several, uh, several countries who are providing us with uh, candidate lead uh, compounds for us to test and, and analyze for them. Uh, in New Delhi, uh, we have a world leading uh, structural biology groups, and they have been using their expertise to develop novel therapeutics for RNA polymerase and proteases. Uh, they are also exploring traditional medicines for COVID-19 therapy, and this has been done also in very close collaboration with our groups here in Trieste. They have ongoing, uh, very strong program looking for human monoclonal antibodies as potential therapeutics. And they also have a very long history of production of point of care diagnostics and vaccine development. And they're obviously using that expertise towards uh, COVID-2. Just to show you again, uh, one of the projects that is ongoing, they've been identifying human monoclonal antibodies from memory B cells, uh, and then using these to try and identify ones which are particularly potent neutralizing antibody, again, with a uh, therapeutic uh, um, way forward is, is what they're, they're, they're looking for. Uh, in terms of our labs in Cape Town, uh, they have been very active in offering their facilities directly to assist in the country's diagnostic efforts. It's acting as a hub for sharing information about ICGB's activities on the African continent, obviously in very close collaboration with our colleagues of the Government of South Africa in the Department of Science and Innovation. And from a research perspective, they're performing metabolomics to try and stratify uh, SARS-CoV-2 patients. And they're also very interested to look at the interaction of SARS-CoV-2 with other infectious agents such as HIV, tuberculosis, and Kaposi's sarcoma virus. Um, institutionally, we've also issued calls for grant applications. We have, as I mentioned, a regular grant funding program, which was the regular calls were due to end at the, um, at the end of April. We realized that we had to try and do something extra for COVID. And so we're hoping to be able to fund an extra 10 or so research proposals. Uh, we're obviously overwhelmed by demand. Uh, our, our resources are completely not up to the demand that we're receiving from our member states. But we have gone through uh, selection processes and we hope to be able to start funding these really top level research projects from our member states uh, by September, which I think is a very, really, very quick turnaround time. Uh, we also have uh, this um, web resource page which I think has proven to be extremely useful. And what we have on here are tools, resources, procedures for diagnostics, for developing kits. And one of the major problems that we've encountered in our community is the inability to access kits or the inability to access uh, reagents for doing RNA extraction. And so what we're providing are simple procedures for people to be able to do this in-house. Obviously this all comes along with the technical assistance and training which is available uh, around the clock for people who need it and of course we also have several other uh, important links and, and, and updates on the developments in COVID-19 research. Um, one thing I just wanted to highlight is that we're also offering technology uh, free of charge on our website for production of potential therapeutics. As you probably all know, there have been some very promising trials with interferon. We produce interferon to uh, meet the requirements of the European Pharmacopeia. And this, all the standard operating procedures um, uh, for production of interferon to this standard is available on our website. And we have technical experts who are happy to work with people to help them develop processes for uh, obtaining production of, of, of these reagents. And so with that, I'll stop. 
Uh, and of course, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, this is my email, and I'm always very happy to hear from people. So thank you very much.